This morning we're going out with New Jersey Department of Environmental Protection to deploy two gliders. These are underwater robots that we use to monitor conditions off the coast of New Jersey and this deployment will take place about eight miles southeast of the northern tip of Sandy Hook. For Dr. Josh Kohut, an oceanographer with Rutgers University, nothing beats a day on the water. It's a perfect morning for it. It's a little warm, but that, that's okay because we've got calm seas and light winds, so that makes the deployment just a little bit easier. Especially when you are on a mission to deploy state-of-the-art oceanographic technology. We're probably good here, Bruce. While flying drones have become the source of international controversy, a quiet revolution is taking place beneath the waves, where underwater drones, also called gliders, are increasingly being deployed in the advancement of science. Yeah, the robots like this and technology similar to this are changing the way that we're oceanographers. It's giving us new data. We're deploying these robots in very difficult conditions that humans couldn't sample. Uh, for example, we had robots out in Hurricane Sandy. Hurricane Irene. We've sent robots to Antarctica uh, to sample those very difficult conditions. And so we're seeing the ocean like we haven't seen it before. At the forefront of this relatively new and rapidly changing area of ocean research is the team of Dr. Scott Glenn at the Institute of Marine and Coastal Sciences at Rutgers University. So this is a Slocum electric glider. These are designed for sustained observations of the ocean. We can sustain these things, we can keep them at sea for up to a year at a time. The nice thing about the gliders is that there's no people involved. So it's an autonomous system, it's a robot. You can fly them into harsh environments where you're not going to go with ships and where you're certainly not going to operate with ships. Gliders here are being prepared for upcoming missions. They will be controlled, not at sea, but from this room. We are in the room we call the Cool Room. It's the most advanced ocean observatory on the planet. The data coming in from gliders deployed around the globe are giving insight into how the planet is changing. It's the global ocean that's transporting heat. And climate change is about what's the heat content of that ocean and how is that heat being transported. And so a change in the heat content or a change in how that heat is transported has a big impact. tilt it down towards the water. Over the course of weeks, the glider deployed off New Jersey will make numerous dives. Its onboard sensors will acquire data on temperature, salinity, dissolved oxygen, and more. The data will be sent to Rutgers in real time via satellite. And it'll come to the surface and they'll grab the data, verify that everything's working properly, we're getting the engineering and the science data back that we need. Uh, and if all's clear there, then we're free to head in. It's the amount of data that we could collect on one launch of this from north to south is, is talking in data points of the hundreds of thousands. Um, to generate this type of data using personnel would be physically impossible. Um, so, so we're able to get a much better picture of what the ocean looks like off the New Jersey coast. At the heart of the glider's ability to stay at sea so long is a propulsion system that does away entirely with propellers, which drain batteries. This is the engine. This is, this is what replaces the propeller. Instead of a propeller going continuously, you have a buoyancy pump, and that buoyancy pump only uses electricity when it pu pulls the water in or pushes the water out. The rest of the time, it just glides on its own, freely descending or freely ascending. A single glider can cost $100,000 or more, depending on the sensors on board. That is still far less than several days at sea on a research ship, which can cost upwards of $50,000 a day. So since 2003, we've lost eight gliders on 325 missions. Dr. Glenn and his team made headlines in December 2009 when they successfully sailed a glider called RU-27 across the Atlantic Ocean from New Jersey to the coast of Spain in 221 days. Next year, Dr. Glenn hopes to send a fleet of 16 of these gliders in a mission around the world. He calls it the Challenger mission. This is the first time a mission of this scale has been attempted. We plan to deploy three or four gliders in each of the five ocean basins. And so as those gliders are flying around those basins, 
uh, 16 data streams will be coming in three times a day into this control center. It'll be uh, put, projected on the maps. It'll be assimilated into the models and hopefully improve those models as we are flying along. Because we need that to better forecast our climate and its impact on our weather. The glider is tuned very well uh, for its flight down and so now we'll, uh, we'll let it take its three and a half week journey down to Cape May.